and I'm super excited to have this next guest on the show. He'll be fighting just a few days from now on Saturday uh, on the amazing Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier card. Uh, he is amazing himself, and uh, can't wait to see him do what he does and take home the W in this fight. We're talking about the man they call the Steamroller, Matt Frivola. Welcome to the show, Matt. Yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. I really appreciate you, brother. I want to let you know over there in Abu Dhabi, I think you just got in like a half a day or so ago, man. I just want to thank you, man, for agreeing to jump on and talk to us. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, we got in uh, yesterday, and uh, we're, we're quarantined today. Uh, we're about to get our first little quarantine workout in. It's uh, 5.30 a.m. over here, but uh, we're right on schedule. So, so it's looking like I'll be fighting around like 7, 7.30 a.m. Abu Dhabi time. So we're going to start getting our workouts in right around the time that I'm fighting. That sounds good. And 7, 7.30 uh, a.m. Abu Dhabi time then would be set on the on the West Coast where 12 hours difference. It'd be like 7, 7.30 uh, p.m. in California in the West Coast and then 10 uh, o'clock at night. And I think you're an East Coast guy, right? So for your friends and family back in the East Coast, 10 o'clock or 10.30. So uh, that will be cool, man, because, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but they didn't do it like that for the, the Max Holloway card. Those guys... We had to get up at 9 a.m. to start watching the prelims, and then I think Max and uh, and Calvin Cater came on at like 2 p.m. or something. So uh, I'm glad they're not doing it for uh, for for you guys like that because a lot of people end up missing that, not knowing what's going on, and no, you know, friends can't get together, and it's just you know, it's I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's a shit show like some people call it, but I'm glad it's gonna be a nighttime card with you, man. But uh, how was the flight there, man? Had you ever uh, taken an international flight or flown like what is it, 16 hours or something? Yes, the flight was actually awesome. I, they put me up in first class, and like I had a nice, a beautiful seat that like reclined into a bed, and had a, had a nice TV with a bunch of uh, movies on, and the service was great. They were bringing me. I was I was crushing water. They were bringing me water. They they had like like uh, kale juice for me because I'm cutting weight. They had a good like weight cut food that I could be eating, and uh, flight was nice. You know, I was posted up. I was chilling. And uh, I had no complaints with that flight. Very cool, very cool. And everyone on the flight, I think, was gonna, was involved in some way with the UFC, or is that not true? Yeah, yeah. It looked like you know everyone was uh, was UFC people there. That's true. Hey, do you, what, I wonder if any if any fighters ever are waiting in the line for the restroom and get into an argument with other fighters there. You think that's happened yet? That would be kind of a drag, especially if it was someone you were fighting or something, right? Yeah, I mean, it could, could definitely happen, but, uh, you know, we, we, get paid, we get paid to fight, so hopefully these fighters know the deal. Yeah, I agree. You know what it reminds me of? I remember uh, reading an article, like, I think four or five years ago when uh, Habib Nurmagomedov uh, went out with friends to a club and a bunch of guys started pushing each other, and I think someone was, like, pushing into him or elbowing him. And even though English is not his first language, he's gotten better at it. And I think he said, hey, guys, I'm a UFC fighter. Why don't we just all chill out, you know, before somebody gets hurt? You know? And, yeah. and he said everyone kind of stopped for a second, looked at him for a couple seconds, and then was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, right? And I thought that's a cool thing because that's got to be hard to do. Have you ever had a situation where someone's being stupid enough to start shoving you in a bar or anything, or you know, or, or starting to get unruly? And have you ever had, wanted to like say something? Or I mean, I'm sure before you were a fighter, probably you may have experienced that. But how about since you've been a UFC fighter? Um, you know, I don't really go out to the bars too much anymore. But you know, back in the day. You know, when I was in college and stuff, I would always go out to the bars and uh, and uh, have have a couple drinks and uh, have some fun. And if anything ever like like uh, started started to escalate, people would take one look at my ears. Yep. And then they and they back off. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like this guy, this guy looks like he knows what he's doing. Absolutely, and that is a good tip, man. I was never a wrestler. I've been a grappler and jujitsu on and off. Uh, for for more than a dozen years and and train striking and I've always told people if they don't know if someone's ears are dinged up you know just give them a path 
you know don't don't bother because <laughs> you you're risking your life in that situation because you got someone that's really trained you know i don't think i've ever heard people talk about it much but for people that don't know for people that didn't wrestle or anyone that's you know watching that doesn't understand you know fighting or anyone's girlfriend or anything like that the the way that you get kind of the cauliflower ear, I guess, is a lot of wrestling. And it, tell me if I'm wrong or if you can tell me more of it. But a lot of it has to do with friction, like when your 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 head is hitting the mat or if someone's you know grabbing you, kind of to try to throw you and like grabbing around your head and and headlocks and stuff. Can you be like a little bit more detailed in in what you you know more than me that that can really cause the cauliflower ear? Yeah, you know, ev everyone's different. There's guys who've been grappling their whole lives and they just won't get cauliflower ear. But some, you know, for me, I wrestled all throughout high school, didn't get any cauliflower ear. And then as soon as I started doing jujitsu, like within like like a, a year of jujitsu, my ears started blowing up. And it, and it was mainly like I'd be, they'd, they'd put me in like a guillotine and I'd rip my head out of the guillotine and my ears would just get folded over and smushed on. And yep. And all, and then uh, then they get they get puffy and purple and they're very painful and then you got to get them drained, but uh, once they once they harden you know they're hard right now. Yep. And no no more pain so. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. And then you're right. It does make sense with the jujitsu and the grappling and it, it's you're right. If you're doing that for a good amount of time, you know I was watching a documentary about a guy talking about how jujitsu was like religion to him, you know, going to, to train was like going to church. And it, I forget, you know, I think this came out a couple years ago and then I think he was in, in England or something and he saw another guy with the cauliflower ears and he started looking at him. And at first the guy was looking at him like, Hey, what the hell do you want? And then he said, he just pointed to his ear and he had a big cauliflower ear too. And he said, the guy looked at him and like gave him the thumbs up. Like cool, yeah. man. Yeah, you know. So it's a brotherhood, man, of hard work. It's it's really rigorous training, man. There's nothing like being on the mat and grappling for an hour with someone else who's really, really good. Uh, you know, it's uh like I like to say, it's a great a badge, workout. A badge of honor. It is. It's it kind of feels like the opposite of making love, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know, about as opposite as you can get. It's like no comfort and, and and all pain and discomfort, you know. But it's a it's a hell of a workout. So let me let me talk to you about your training, man. Are you you training with Sarah Longo or what? What gym are you with? Yeah, uh, back home, you know, Long Island, New York is home, and uh, whenever I'm home, I'm training with the Sarah Longo team, and then uh, I go down to Tampa, Florida, where I, I really started my uh, fighting career. Uh, I lived down in Tampa for about seven years. So I go down there and train at uh, Grace Tampa South, and uh, I kind of split my camps now. You know, I'll, I'll be home in Long Island, training, uh, training, uh, getting some high-level training with the Sarah Longo guys, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, but you know, that's home, and that's I'm pretty comfortable there. You know, I got I got my my woman making my bed every morning, making me breakfast every morning, do my laundry. You know, I, I get a little comfortable back home, and I and I got to make a switch up, and I go down to Tampa. I get. I get new looks. I get new coaches. I'm kind of living like a nomad down there. And, uh, you know, whenever I, I get a little too comfortable, I feel like I need to make a move and just switch things up a little. And and I got a great team uh, down in Tampa, and I got a great team back home in Long Island. You know, everyone's cool. Everyone gets it, and, uh, and we make it work. Very cool. Would you like to tell us who's been helping you for this camp, or is that kind of a secret you don't really want to let out? No, no. Uh, you know, I... I I've been splitting it between uh, the Sarah Longo and Grace Tampa South. I got my Tampa guys with me, my boy uh, Billy Q, who I've been beating up for years. You know, he's uh, nice. he's, he's always always helping me. You know, we came up as amateurs together, and uh, you know, I'm always helping him out. He's always helping me out. And uh, tough guy. So we, yeah, yeah. So we we got a lot of great training. And then my head coach and manager Matt Arroyo, and then uh, I got my Muay Thai coach Dan Rawlings with me. And then uh, when I was back home in Long Island, I was working with Ray Longo, you know, Matt Sarah, mm -hmm. and then uh, my striking coach, Eric Heyer, and, uh, and all the guys up there. So it, it's been a great camp, and I'm 100% prepared to make uh, the most out of this uh, huge opportunity I got. Absolutely, and those are some great people. Matt Serra, former UFC champion. I've always been a fan of his. He's such a he's such a, a a true 
master of uh, jujitsu and and a great coach and uh, amazing character, really charismatic dude, man. That guy like represents like an East Coast Italian guy, I think, better than anyone else. What's he like to hang around with, man? Can he? Does he? Is he pretty funny sometimes, or is he like completely serious when he trains? What What's it like uh, jumping in and doing some training with him? And in his forties, will he still jump in there and, and go hard sometimes, or does he like to back off that a little bit nowadays? Yeah, he definitely, he's always training, uh, but his energy is contagious. Like, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be training in the gym. As soon as he walks into the gym, you know he's there. You know, you don't even ha you don't have to see him, but you'll hear him, and then you'll feel his energy, and then just his energy is contagious, and everyone is, you know, is, uh, is working harder because he's around, he's watching, and, and uh, you know, at Sarah BJJ, there's killers on the mats. You know, every time... You know, I, I'll do jujitsu class there. Uh, there's killers all over the place, and uh, and it's it's high level training, and it's and it's uh, right in my backyard of uh, Huntington, Long Island. So it's great. Absolutely, the, I guess the other Long Island fighter that people know is uh, is Chris Chris Weidman. You ever spend any time with him? Oh yeah, you know, uh, I I train at Sarah BJJ, and then Longo and Weidman, and. Uh, and Weidman was actually just around the gym. He he was training, getting ready for uh, Uriah Hall, and uh, you know, just seeing, you know, watching him work, and uh, you know, following his career is and having him, you know, be a, be a teammate. He's he's the captain, the captain of the team. You know, he leads from the front. He leads by example, and uh, and he's a man. Absolutely, really cool dude. When I flew in, I flew in uh, a year and a half ago to cover uh, the event where he fought in Boston. He didn't win in that light heavyweight fight, uh, you know, against uh, against Reyes. But you can't win them all. But I flew. I was at that one. It, was that you were there? You fought on that card? Yeah. No, no, I didn't fight, but I was I was at that that fight. Nice. Yeah, it was a cool event. <laughs> when so much energy, especially people were excited. I remember uh, Joe Lozon coming back. And, and winning yeah. that fight, man. And so, but the funny thing is, I flew in uh, from um, from LA, and sitting next to me, I think was like a a cousin or an aunt of Chris Weidman. I think like it was his aunt or something. And she and I talked about it, and she said, "Yeah, the Weidmans, Chris, and his whole family—they're just amazingly great people." And so, yeah, it's good to know Long Island is a good uh, good group over there in the five one six area code, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nice. So you've got a you got a good uh, a fight here on your hands here. Otman, no one knows really how to say his last name. Izatar, Azatar, Azater. Uh he's a tough dude, man, from Morocco, although Sherdog has him fighting out of Germany. So I guess he's a Moroccan guy that fought out of Germany for a while. Both of you are 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 really, you know, up there working on cracking that top ten. Uh, you know, or you may have already. And so this is a big fight, man. What, uh, what do you think he brings to the table and, uh, what makes this, uh, an interesting matchup for you? Yeah. You know, he's undefeated 13 and 0. he's got like 11 first round finishes. So, you know, he's, he's never tasted defeat. He's, uh, you know, I, I remember when I was undefeated. You know, I walk around like my shit don't stink, you know. Right, right. But, uh, but, I, but you know, I got humbled, and that's what I, what I uh, plan to do to him. You know, he's very good, very strong, uh, great stand-up, but uh, he's never been tested like I'm going to test him. And, uh, you know, it's mixed martial arts, and one of the best things that, I, that I'm good at is uh, mixing, you know, all the martial arts together comes natural to me with the wrestling, the jujitsu, the Muay Thai. And, uh, you know, I plan on dragging him into deep water and drowning him, you know, seeing what he's really made of. I like that. And that's just, that's a statement that I use sometimes in, in my analysis of some fights that I feel that one fighter is kind of going to, like I'd say, take him out to deep water and drown him. And yeah, I think so. I think that, uh, that he's just really used to guys wanting to agree to just stand and bang with him and they're just not, you know, they're just not seeing how fast he is there. And they're not understanding that, you know, that that's pretty much his game completely. So, you know, I'm sure you'll be there mixing it up a little bit. But I think uh, having some grappling put on him will be really interesting uh, to see. And I think that uh, you definitely have the skills to beat him. Your last couple fights, super impressive. And your last few fights. And, and you know what, man? I was just saying to my producer, I know that everyone pretty much will take uh will take a loss when they have a loss and obviously you're not making any excuses 
you know, for that loss that you have. But I, I just, I have a feeling nine out of 10 times you beat Marco Polo Reyes. So my feeling almost is that that just like lightning striking almost in, in that fight, but it is what it is. But the reality is aside from that fight, no one's been able to handle you. And, uh, and you've got some great fighters, the last three fighters, the draw with Venata and Venata is a beast. Uh, Jalen Turner, Jalen's been on our show a few times in Tarantula. And it seems like after, uh, you beat him, he's been killing it against everyone else. And, uh, and then, uh, the, the violent Bob Ross. I love that nickname, man. For the, for the longest time, I was like, why is this dude Luis Pena violent Bob Ross? And I'm sitting there scratching my head as my girlfriend that finally told me. She said, did you say Bob Ross? And I said, yeah. And she said he was a painter in like the 70s and 80s and 90s with like a big curly hair and like a, you know, like a beard. And I looked and yeah. the dude looks like Luis <laughs> <Louis> Pena. <laughs> I mean, yeah, tell, that has to be one of the most creative nicknames for a guy to dig into like 20 or 30 years ago and pick an artist and name themselves after the violent Bob Ross. That's kind of funny, don't you think? Yeah, it's a funny one. And, you know, we like to call him emotional Bob Toss. But... <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and that was a good fight, though. But, man, so you've been beating some good people. And uh, and that fight was was in 2019. So this whole pandemic period, uh, you didn't fight. Were there some fights that were trying to be made for you in this past year or, or that didn't come through or not? Yeah, you know, I was, I was, supposed to, I was booked to fight three times in 2020. But uh, two of them got canceled due to COVID, and then one of them, I broke my foot a week out. So it was, you know, it was a rough 2020. Uh, but you know, it was rough for everyone. Everyone had a rough 2020. Yeah. And uh, in the end of the day, you know, I was training the whole time. I was uh, up in my game the whole time. I was leveling up the whole time. And uh, you know, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing than than working on my craft and improving. Um, the only shitty part was that I. I wasn't able to fight and show the world, but uh, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, through all those cancellations, I kept at it. I kept training. I kept, you know, kept the faith that my opportunity was going to come. And now, you know, we're on a Conor McGregor pay-per-view card against an undefeated opponent in Fight Island Abu Dhabi. So yep. everything worked out. Now we got this opportunity and make the most of it. Absolutely. And you are in that lightweight division. Uh, just like uh, Connor and Dustin Poirier, and uh, and you're one of the guys that it's being talked about uh, as a guy who could be joining that uh, that uh, logjam uh, at the top with a bunch of talented guys. I'm sure you'd love to be uh, up in there. Do you ever like uh, look at like a timeline in, in which you would love to fight one of these top five or six guys? And if so, are there any of them that you think would be the most fun match with you? If you look at Connor, if you look at uh, Dustin, if you look at Justin Gaethje, Charles Oliveira, uh, Michael Chandler, Dan Hooker, uh, you know, uh, Ferguson, like that? Yeah, you know, all all these guys, all those guys, it would be an honor to fight them, you know. Um, but right now, you know, I'm focused, focused on Ottman and, you know, one fight at, at a time and, uh, you know, we'll get there. But, uh, you know, I definitely would like me a nice uh, red panty night fight with Connor. That'd yeah. Be nice. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Well, I tell you what, you're in a really good position. I think you just turned 30 years old a few months ago, and that's really like dead center in your prime, I think. So it's like you can, you're can you going to be as good, if not better, uh, over the next year or two or three years even, and, and you know, and, and could fight for 10 more years in this division. So, uh, you know, I think you're in a really good position, man. Um, do you have any goals for after fighting? Do you think you might like to be a coach or have your own school or be a commentator or, or, you know, uh, what any involvement, uh, that, that you can think of that you would like to, uh, to be involved with aside from, uh, from fighting? Yeah, definitely. You know, I'll, I'll always be involved in uh, martial arts. You know, I'm a martial artist till the day I die. And um, I'll always be involved, uh, you know, somehow once I'm done fighting, um, you know, helping younger fighters, uh, coaching, teaching, uh, being involved uh, somehow. I'll always be around. Excellent. Were there any fighters that you looked up to coming up in this sport? Um, my man, Chris Weidman. Nice. You know, I was, I was 
just he was inspiring from the beginning, you know, watching him take down the legend, Anderson Silva, and then having him be from Long Island. Um, you know, he, I was always a huge Chris Weidman fan. Now that, you know, now that I, I could call him a friend, I could call him, you know, my team captain, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's a dream come true, you know. Absolutely. We well, have a great team there, a great support system. And uh, anyone else in your family involved in fighting or ever a, a fighter in any way? Uh, you know, my my dad was was uh, was a tough street fighter, as, uh, as you like to say. But uh, you know, I actually I have a twin brother. Wow. And uh, yeah, but he he's not he doesn't fight. He doesn't. Uh, you know, he he came to a wrestling camp with me once in eighth grade, mm-hmm. and he got kneed in the balls and pissed blood, and then never wrestled again. That's it. You know, that that was the end of his martial arts. But he's an athlete, you know, and we've been competing our our entire lives. You know, he's a really good football player a good great baseball player and he's just a natural athlete and uh you know i think that's where my competitiveness really comes me and him uh just competing our whole lives and uh but uh no he doesn't he he likes he, he's a huge ufc fan you know nice. and he's one of those guys who watches watches the ufc and thinks he can do all that stuff and he'll come hit mitts with me and and have some fun uh but uh doesn't really train. Nice. Does he live anywhere near you? Yeah, he's back home in Long Island. Gotcha. Because, like, if you didn't have any training, would you ever try to grab him and use him to dummy for some stuff you wanted to do? I bet he could come in handy for that, maybe. Definitely. definitely. Nice. That's cool to be a twin, though, man. I always thought that would be fun as hell. Did you, like, prank people in high school or junior high school or, like, girls or anything like that where the other guy showed up or something? Well, we're we're fraternal, so we don't we don't look alike. Okay, not that. He, he, that. he was the safety. I was the linebacker. That's cool, man. No, it's good to have brothers and your families behind you. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited to see this fight, man. What do you know? What fight number? It's probably what a dozen fights as norm as usual, if not thirteen. Are you going to be like the sixth fight in the card or seventh, or do you know? I'm the second fight on the main card. Wow, so. I, I did not know that. That is freaking awesome because I knew you were either like main event of prelims or on the main, but you are on the main. That's sweet. That's got to be a great feeling to be part of the pay-per-view broadcast there, man. That's got to make you happy, huh? Oh, yeah. It's it's pretty amazing. I mean, making making that pay-per-view, pay-per-view uh, jump is pretty cool. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Weight cut going good? You feel good? Yeah, weight cut's going good. About to get this workout in and, uh, you know, start the fight week. It's mon- Monday morning here, about 6 a.m. Uh, so we're get- getting this fight week going, you know. we got to stay quarantined this uh, this whole day. So uh, we're going to do two quarantine workouts today. We're used to it because we, w- we were just quarantined in Vegas for three days, which was pretty horrible because they didn't even have mats for us to work out in. Oh, man. They wouldn't even let us go use the gym. It was like, it, they don't, I mean, the, the second and third day, they at least let us work out in the parking lot. But the first day, we were just working out in the hotel, like, hallway. Oh, but, man. Uh, you know, we made the most of it. We got our work in. And, uh, you know, in the end of the day, it doesn't matter what's going to happen. I'm going to show up fight day. I'm going to give this guy all I got. And uh, it's going to be enough. Absolutely, man. I think, uh, like your nickname, you'll be steamrolling him uh, to the ground, man. I can't wait to see you do what you normally do. What's the best social media place for people to hit you up to show support? Yeah, follow me on uh, Instagram, uh, steamrollerforvola underscore MMA. You know, I'm I'm sharing everything about Fight Island and the whole fight week and, uh, and all the little behind the scenes stuff that uh that uh people don't usually see so definitely give me a follow on that and uh follow the journey fantastic man i know people will and uh, we will as well really appreciate appreciate you taking the time uh, my brother matt frivola will be cheering for you go get that w man i know you can yeah appreciate it man You're very Have well. a good one you too take care and that was the steam roll up matt Frivola, good dude, Dr. Adam Rorta. This is awesome, him joining us here uh, less than a week before the big fights here. And people are seeing it now three days before the big fights. You can go back and backtrack and look at some of the stuff uh, 
that he has shown all uh, this week uh, in his Instagram. Matt, the steamroller Frivola. I tell you, his opponent, Atman Azatar, or Azatar, is a beast. But I think, like Matt said, he's going to put a balanced MMA attack on him. And, um, you know, I, I really think that Matt can do it. I think that his grappling and his experience and out of a, a great team, uh, Sarah Longo and uh, Gracie Tampa, um, he's going to throw them some, he's going to throw Azatar some great American uh, mixed martial arts and grappling. And I think that may just be uh, more than uh, Mr. Azatar can handle. Absolutely. I, I'm going for uh, the uh, uh, win here for Mr. Favola. I know it's going to be an upset uh, uh, as of right now while I'm looking at the screen. Yeah. What do they say? Um, what do they say the odds are here? There it looks uh, like it is. Uh, where is it? He's a slight dog. Not by much, man. Wow. But pretty it, pretty yeah. close to even. But yeah, yeah, very close. One and a, one and a half to one may be favorite for yeah. Azatar. And so you can get a little bit of uh, of money on Matt Frivola. And uh, I think he can do it. Confident guy, strong guy, great camp. They're both 30 years old. So they're both, they're right in their prime. And uh, this is going to be, uh, this fight should be fireworks. Both guys are winners. Frivola, what, eight and one or nine and one. Azatar, 13 and zero. Oh. And uh, man going to be killer can't wait to see it and really appreciate matt man well dr adam rorda what a great show man so many great people uh here and uh you know from from the start to the finish cody Stamen, thank you so much uh brother and then um and then uh also uh very much uh grateful to uh our second guest uh i can't Teresa Sagala. Ter <laughs> <laughs> yeah Teresa. i can't believe my mind is fried today Teresa Sigala, thank you so much too uh and then our last guest mr matt the steamroller frivola really appreciate you guys dr Adam absolutely Rorta, amazing great, great episode show, great and, production on your part as well well you know i'm trying i'm still making a few little mistakes here and there but uh you know what we're pulling it together uh, and it's only because of everybody out there showing the support and love for the show if you haven't already go on over to our uh social media as you see at the top of the screen it is just at MMA Power Hour or, or whatever forward slash MMA Power Hour. Uh, every week, we uh, love the interactions. Thank you so much for interacting here on, uh, if you're on Fight TV. Uh, if you're not on Fight TV yet, make sure to go on over. Subscribe to the channel, uh, the MMA Power Hour channel there. It's for free. It's F-I-T-E dot TV. And uh, you can uh, interact with us by uh checking us out on the de desktop i think only on the desktop can you actually chat with us uh otherwise we're found other places you can probably google us now at this point and look for uh videos out there on youtube we are there we do interact we love your guys's input and uh you know uh as far as this last little segment we wouldn't have interacted much uh with any comments because uh as you saw uh with some discrepancies right now we're actually a little bit uh pre-recorded yeah this last this little segment, segment was, was. pre-recorded the other did, two yeah. are not so i wanted to go ahead and throw that out there because there were a few discrepancies <laughs> yeah yep, <laughs> that so made me kind of we did uh -huh. we, yeah uh, we, we weren't to, supposed to do that but but uh, yeah, people don't mind people understand yeah, we we yeah. caught we caught on a sunday we were able to catch matt provola and then this is you guys are seeing it wednesday and i think you all are still happy seeing it then and uh and you know the rest of it uh live today absolutely well you know what colin uh, another amazing episode i want to thank you so much for everything that you've brought forward here uh everybody out there make sure to go on over to nessa's hemp uh it's just mma ph as in mma power hour mma ph dot nessa's hemp dot com get yourself a nice little discount on that hemp oil it is the highest quality of all hemp oils uh, they're basically setting the standard with the, their cbda formula that they have it's not just cbd it is cbda and with all the big news that's come out about marijuana now being allowed by the ufc uh, of course it's on a state level that uh, needs to be lifted yet as well but uh, some states already have so cbd product for all of you fighters out there all of you athletes this is one of the best one it is definitely the cleanest and they also have been certified organic uh one of the only certified organic hemp oils out there uh make sure to get it it's mmaph.nessashemp.com great stuff absolutely high quality and uh and you know you definitely would be 
investing your money for the small amount of cost to buy a bottle uh, wisely. So that's Absolutely. You know, really well, good. Well, hey, Colin, thank you so much for another amazing episode. Everybody out there, I appreciate everything. I am tapping out. Thank you, Dr. Adam Rorta, as always. What you do is amazing, and uh, your contribution is invaluable. Really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, so always already thanked uh, the fighters in order, and uh, thank you guys so much again. Cody, Sharissa, and Matt. And, uh, you know, you guys follow them, really good people, and uh, that's what we want. That's who we want to cheer for, are really nice people that we can relate to and that are willing to work hard and that are respectful and that are, are, are really decent, you know, people inside because that's what's important. A lot of people looking at what someone looks out, like outside, obviously, if you're talking about going out with someone or marrying someone, that's important looks. But in reality, the inside is the most important. That's what makes a person who they are. And so uh, treat yourself good spread the love in a positive way be that guy be that girl let people know you have your back even your co-workers and your your neighbors and take good care of your pets they love you unconditionally and they need uh you know fresh water and uh, fresh food and uh you know to be walked if they're a dog or, or, or clean litter box if they're a cat so uh take good care of them and uh that's about it we're going to bring you a great show next week we'll let you know the guests uh on social media and uh that's about it for the entire team here at the mma power hour I'm Colin Crandall, and for tonight, I'm tapping out. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.